Today we're answering the question, is Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt worth downloading? The short and simple answer is yes, but to help you make the decision for yourself, I'm going to provide you with some important information about the game, as well as some of my gameplay so far. Yo, what's going on my fellow monkeys? My name is Gunnett Monkey, and if you enjoy Battle Royale games, but want something that's unique from the rest, then this is the perfect game for you. This is a 45 person Battle Royale with a vampire setting, available on PS5 and PC. At the time of recording this, there are 7 different characters you can play as, with 1 unique ability each, 1 unique passive each, and a clan ability, which is an ability 2 characters share when they're from the same clan. For example, Siren and Muse are both from the Toriador clan, and so they both have the projection dash ability which allows them to send out a projection of themselves which they can then dash to. In Blood Hunt there's no fall damage and you're able to scale buildings. This leads to most gunfights occurring on the roofs of the city. You get two gun slots and one melee slot. Don't underestimate melee in this game as it's very effective, doing large amounts of damage on enemies and replenishing the player's health a small amount with each hit. Another unique and key element to Blood Hunt is civilians. These are NPCs placed around the map that when fed on will give you a percentage boost towards one of several different options, these being things such as health regen over time, melee damage increase, and reduced ability cooldowns. Feeding on civilians will also refill your health bar completely. As far as modes go, there is a tutorial to show you the basics, and then there is solo and trios. Just like most squad battle royale games have respawns, Blood Hunt does too. In order to respawn your teammate, you will need to go to a certain location that is shown on your map, and can also be pinged by your fallen allies. These respawn locations can only be used once. However, However, solo is where things get a lot different. You start with an extra life, but on top of that, there's also a certain group of civilians in the city that offer an extra life when you feed on them. Extra lives cannot be stacked, so make sure you've already used your extra life before feeding on one of these civilians. So far, I've put 15 hours into Blood Hunt, and although I admit to not being very good at the game, I'm still finding myself wanting to play more and more. With a variety of abilities, playstyles, weapons, and customization, you'll find yourself having a different experience every game. On top of all that, with an interactive lobby called the Elysium. You can enjoy showing off your emotes and or outfits to other players, as well as interact with NPCs that will give you quests to complete in the Elysium, and in Battle Royale giving those players that aren't bloodthirsty for kills something extra to aim towards. The game runs smoothly and already has a good player base, as well as a battle pass already available and a ranked mode coming out in the future. The developers are already putting a lot of effort into the game and will continue to do so, so expect regular updates. At the end of the day this is a well put together game that's free to play. The only thing you have to lose is storage space and a little bit of time, so I definitely recommend this game to everyone watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you would like to see more videos on Blood Hunt, then please let me know in the comments down below. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.